Transmitter device activating. Coordinates set for Earth 2. Hey everyone, welcome to the Earth 2 podcast, your weekly explanation of the DC Comics multiverse and the legacy of their Golden Age characters through the Silver and the Bronze Ages of comics. I'm Peter Watson. And I'm David Steele. Welcome back. Thank you for joining us. We're back in the pages of Brave and Bold after a little bit of a, a, a what's the word, a pause, a hiatus, mm. a, a gap. Yes. It felt there was a while ago we were doing mm-hmm. Brave and the Bold and nothing else. Yes. A while ago now. but We're almost back to that now. I know, yes, because <laughs> I've worked out and looking ahead, including this issue, we're going to do six out of the next 12 issues of Brave and Bold. So if you've got a Brave and Bold Omniboo or a Showcase Presents Brave and Bold or a, an extensive Bronze Age Brave and Bold collection, have them on standby. We're doing issue 107, published on 6th of March 1973, which was a Tuesday. I can confirm. Don't need to look that up. And this one features... Batman and Black Canary. Now, we said ages ago that we were going to kind of pick and choose what Black Canary stories we did, given her sort of status as an Earth 2 emigre. Yes, and we've chosen this one, and let's see if you can figure out why. It's a weird one. We could we could have done every single Black Canary story ever, mm-hmm. which would have meant all those action comics backup stories with Green yeah. Arrow and all those, and it's like, we would have been, we'd never would have got it done, but I think... Solo starring in an issue of Brave and Bold is probably mm. justifiable on its own, isn't it? Because she yeah. is a Golden Age character. She is a former member of the Justice Society. Indeed. And as Peter hinted at there, there's a couple of interesting little asides in this story which mm-hmm. are worth bearing in mind if you consider her sort of ongoing arc, as it were. Yes. Anyway, without any further ado, Peter's going to tell you about the very dynamic and exciting cover. At the top, we have the Brave and Bold logo with the DC Bullet in the left-hand top corner and the 20 cents in the right-hand top corner. And we've got the logos for Batman and Black Canary. Now, it's the Batman logo that is almost like the TV series. Yes, it, Peter almost mimed it for the benefit of our YouTube viewers there. Yes. So that, that so you start <laughs> to spread your arms out. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so it's the one that's a slight update of the one from the TV series. It's, I think it's more like the cartoon version that they had, the filmation one. Anyway, yes. And the Black Canary logo as well, which has got black in black and canary in yellow. Mm. But enough about these logos. Yes, the main image on the cover is a red sky. Parachuting down from the sky, we have Black Canary. Already landed and untangling his parachute is Batman, who's saying, Safe landing. The skyjacker doesn't know we're on his trail. Is that right, Batman? Because in the foreground of the page, we have... A gun being held in two hands. I think it's a rifle. And it's pointed right at the Dark Knight Detective. Gosh! And in the corner we have the name of the story, The Three Million million Dollar Sky. Sky. It's a very exciting cover. It's dynamic. It really is. It's only one for it. I love how the black and blues of the costumes and the blues and blacks and yellows of the the logos contrast against the darkening evening sky. Yes. Gorgeous. There's also a lovely little uh, stylized Mm. J.A. initial in the corner because it's obviously, it's a Jim Apparel cover. Jim Apparel, which is Mm. great because it means we get to use the Jim Apparel hashtag and all the socials and all the posts and everyone loves Jim Apparel. Mm Mm-hmm. I found about six or seven, at least. I see. I seem to say that every week at the moment. <laughs> but I found this is one that was reprinted a lot in other territories, uh-huh. um, I'm, and I'm going to flag up straight away because one of the the covers that I found, I think, I believe, is a Lebanese reprint, and I think I've shown Peter it before mm-hmm. at IRL, and I'll post it in the socials, listeners. So go and have a look at it because it's fascinating because it's the image from the cover. Batman is looking round to basically an empty space. Black Canary has been, like, (laughs) airbrushed out of the cover of her own story. Oh, dear. It's interesting because there's a similar one, I think, there's a similar thing been done to a Superman cover that I saw Mm -hmm. where it looks like Lois has been sort of removed or repositioned. Right, okay. Um, So I'm guessing there must be some law or tendency about Mm. against showing women in covers or something. I'm not sure. But it'd be fascinating to see the inside of that reprint and just see, you know, if she was removed from the entire story. <laughs> that would be bizarre. I don't know. But as I say, listeners, we're getting ahead of ourselves a bit, but make sure you check out the socials for this one because the, the foreign reprints of this are just a, a joy to behold, frankly, because it's such an exciting cover. I mean, Jim Aparo is at his peak probably at this point in the 70s. Mm-hmm. He's doing b and He's working Phantom Stranger. I believe yeah. he's, he's doing you know Aquaman around this time or he will be doing Aquaman again yeah. around this time. Glorious stuff. So... I talked enough beforehand, but I'll tell you quickly, listeners, I hadn't read this before we started the prep. <gasps> really? I know. You know this. I told you. He <laughs> was acting up for the, for the back with the listeners. My copy sat here, and it's bag and board with its £2.95 price sticker, and the sticker reading City Centre Comics, 168 Buchanan Street, 0141 331 1215. 
Yes. Those were the days. Yes, that number's still valid. But not for City Centre Comics. It's for Forbidden Planet International. Yes, I'm not sure what... Do we have a, a contact telephone number for City Centre Comics? I don't know. Apologies, Chris, if you're listening. Yeah, so basically I've owned this comic since at least prior to, to May 2002, and I've never read it. Isn't that terrible? <laughs> you're an absolute shocker, Steve. You know, that's shocker. a fine thing. Right, we jump in our opening splash panel. Straight away, there's a, a logo that puts me in mind of the Lee Majors television series just because of the way it's all laid out. But anyway, we are told that the story, reiterated from the cover, is called The, the Three Million Dollar Sky. Sky. And an opening caption sets the scene. Gotham Airport. A jetliner makes an unscheduled landing as two familiar figures race onto the scene. Yes, and the two familiar figures are none other than Commissioner Gordon Batman are speeding across the runway. Commissioner Gordon saying... Here comes the skyjacked ship, Batman. My God, it's going to crash. The pilot's got to pull her out, Commissioner. There are 93 innocent hostages aboard. There's a scream from this aeroplane as we see it colliding with the ground. a burst of flames as its tail section seems to scrape across the ground. Captioning continues. And a siren's wail, mighty engines whine, and huge tires burn into the concrete. The masked manhunter is flung into the aerial adventure of our turbulent age. Wherein... Only Black Canary, heroine extraordinaire, can aid him in wrestling triumph from disaster. Gosh. Top of page two. Caption reads, part one. And then part one, we find out, is called... One One of of our our jets jets is skyjacked. skyjacked. That's very 1973, isn't it? The screaming, scree sound effect of the the plane grinding across the, the runway continues as we see emergency vehicles rushing to assistance. Off camera, you hear Batman yelling, He did it! He pulled her out! Panel 2, it's an aerial shot looking down at the aeroplane, and there's a nice jaggedy speech bubble, which tells us that obviously someone is speaking over a radio, making some kind of broadcast. The jaggedy speech bubble reads, This is the Skyjacker talking. Stay back, Batman. I know Gotham City is your turf, but I had to land here. Now, you listen to me. If you want those passengers, let go safely... You'll deliver within the hour, in small bills, a ransom of three million bucks. Gosh, small bills. How many little Williams do you know? Panel three is quite good because we see some of the passengers of the airplane inside looking shocked and scared and terrified. Panel four, we're back outside with Batman and Commissioner Gordon. And what looks like the human bomb. <laughs> it's obviously someone in an asbestos suit about to kind of try and deal with the flames, etc. The human bomb is yet to make his Earth 2 podcast debut. Hmm. Will we see him before the end of the year? Yes. Commissioner Gordon is saying, three million? Why, that's bigger than any skyjacker demand yet. Chalk it up to the high cost of living, Commissioner. But it'll turn into the high cost of dying if we don't play ball and get those hostages off alive. Dialogue is singing. This is gorgeous. It's another nice shot of the aeroplane at a bit of a Dutch tilt. And the skyjacker's reported speech continues. Now for my other demand. I want released immediately from state prison and brought here with the money, Monk Devlin. Commissioner Gordon and Batman are rushing back towards the terminal building in the first panel of page three. Commissioner Gordon saying, Batman, if he wants Devlin, the notorious public enemy number one that you sent away for good, he wants him freed. It's too much. Come on, we've got to get to the control tower. Moments later. Up in the control tower, Commissioner Gordon has a a radio mic type thing in his hand as he's saying, Now listen, you skyjacking scum. This is Police Commissioner Gordon. We'll never give in to your demands for releasing Monk Devlin. Justice and public opinion would never allow it. Let me cue you, top cop. Public opinion will bury you if you let anything happen to these 93 people I got here. Batman is lifting up the telephone, not the receiver, the cradle. Oh God, what would you call it nowadays? The mean, bo- the, the bit with the dial thing. Explain this well for our younger listeners. Yes. Batman's holding up the body of the telephone and saying, He's right. The pilot radioed he has a submachine gun, grenades, and a possible bomb planted aboard. I'm going to call the governor. And the caption for panel four again reads... Moments later... Yes, take a drink every time a caption says moments later on page three of this issue, listeners. We see Batman speaking to a nice old-fashioned telephone and the governor's voice coming down the line saying... Yes, Batman, I've been following it on TV and will stand by on this hotline. Sir, I'm afraid we must give in and release Devlin. Of course, you alone have the authority to do so. We're in the governor's office for the final panel of page three... You can see a photograph of someone on his desk. There's an attendant, member of staff, 
hovering close by, and there's a TV screen showing the aeroplane. We don't see the governor's face, we see the back of his head as he speaks on the phone to Batman, saying, I realise that, but I'm concerned this will set a bad example. Money is one thing, but now every two-bit skyjacker may start extorting the release of half the criminals in our prison system. But, Governor, that won't happen if I bust this case after we get those hostages clear. If you release Devlin, I swear I'll bring him and his skyjacking pal right back here to this field. Or I'll hang up my cape and cowl for good. Nice long-distance shot of the aeroplane and terminal building and all of that, as the Governor replies. Very well, Batman. I'll give the order for Devlin's release. And a slow dissolve. And so, shortly, far up the Gotham River at State Prison... State prison. Um, does that look like any other prison you've seen in any other Batman stories, Peter? <laughs> it's almost like a castle, isn't it? Mm, yeah. Interesting. So we see Devlin wearing his grey prison fatigues, very much like Lex Luthor seemed to be wearing mm-hmm. for quite a long time. Mm-hmm. He's got red hair as well, so he looks even more like Lex Luthor. Kind of imagine what Jim Aparo's Guy Gardner might look like. <gasps> yes. Listeners, and you've uh-huh. got an idea. Uh-huh. pre bowl cut. Yep. And we see Mr Devlin, again, this panel's also at Dutch Tilt, walking down the path away from this prison castle type situation. And Devlin is laughing as he goes. Ha ha ha, he laughs. And in the background, we can see what looks like one armed guard, another man, hands in his pockets, clearly. A man in a suit. Guy with a gun says, Listen to that hyena, Warden. I never thought I'd see him walk out of here. You sure Batman's doing right? He's got no choice. Nobody does. Interesting. Slow dissolve. An hour later, by fast helicopter. Yes, helicopter has obviously arrived at Gotham City Airport, and Devlin... Carrying his briefcase, which is probably full of cash, standing next to his helicopter, and he's laughing and saying, Oh, bad man, thought you put me away for good, didn't you? But you see, I got an unknown friend. Ha <laughs> ha! Batman with his head at an awkward angle thinks, Hmm. Odd that Devlin doesn't know his rescuer, but also he doesn't know I promised to bring him back no matter what. Another caption reads, Soon! And we see Devlin still laughing loudly to himself with his briefcase full of cash and a lot of other stuff over his shoulder walking towards the aeroplane. As they watch him go, Commissioner Gordon's saying, There he goes, with three million dollars, a murderer, a drug trafficker. I, I can't stand this. Keep a grip on yourself, Commissioner. There are times that try men's souls. This is such a time. And as Monk Devlin steps into the parked jet... Yep, see Devlin, it looks like he's got a golf bag over his shoulder on his panel, actually. <laughs> it does, yeah. Um, Walk into the airplane and we see another guy in sort of orange overalls. Maybe it's meant to be a sort of military style sort of colouring with grenades over his shoulder. He's also bearing a rifle. And as he arrives, Devlin greets him saying, Hi, I know you, Willie, Willie Cresh, Tony's little brother. Check, Monk. My brother was always loyal to you. It's a family trait. Yeah, too bad Tony got knocked off years ago. He was tops. If I'd had more guys like him, I'd never have been sent away. The old mob's gone, broken up. But you and I, kid. We're a new team. We're going to live free and clear like kings with this. Gestures to the briefcase full of cash. How can I thank you, buddy? This caper has its own rewards built in, monk. Now, let's attend to business. And Willie gestures with his thumb, obviously meaning that he should get going. The next panel, we're inside the cockpit of the aircraft. Over the, the little speaker, we hear Skyjacker's voice once again. This is the Skyjacker, Captain. Your next stop will be San Pedro. And Captain Stanton replies, South America? That's thousands of miles. I need a flight engineer and at least one stewardess. It'll take a lot of hot coffee to get us there. Yes, he needs the engineer to make the coffee. Listeners, we'll just point that out. <laughs> We're back at the terminal building in the next panel. Skyjacker's voice can be heard. Okay, Captain, but no funny business, or these passengers will make the trip with us. Batman switches off the little radio mic thing delightedly and says, Great! The pilot, Captain Stanton, is giving us a chance. The chance we desperately need. To which Commissioner Gordon says, What are you cooking under your cowl? Dialogue's amazing. It is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's awesome. I'm loving it. And then we arrive at top of page six. Commissioner Gordon's answer comes within the hour. A familiar figure enters the room. Commissioner Gordon's head whirls and he says, But Canary, what are you doing here? When the bat whistles, the canary flies, Commissioner. Beautiful, Dinah. Now we've no time to lose. Come along. The caption for panel two. Black Canary, alias Dinah Lance, the gorgeous Justice League chick from Earth 2, now a formidable heroine on her own Earth 1. Shortly. Yes, see a little door with a label on it saying pilots and emerging from this two uniformed individuals. The first one, 
handsome looking man with a very neat moustache. The second is a attractive lady in a very 70s style red and black air stewardess uniform. Yes. The moustachioed man salutes Commissioner Gordon saying, Flight Engineer Todd and Stewardess Dinah Lance reporting for emergency duty. What? exclaims Commissioner Gordon. He looks closer in the next panel saying, Batman, is it really you? Good disguise, eh? We've got to fool Devlin and that Skyjacker or it could be the end of both our careers. Gosh. Caption for panel four, page six. So now, as the part jet takes on two new crew members... Another Dutch tilt shot of the aircraft. We can see the disguised Batman and Black Canary walking across the, their own way towards the vehicle. As Canary observes, The passengers and regular stewardesses have been released. Thank the stars. So far, so good. Says Bats, and that's another Magnificent Seven quote. We had one quite recently. We did, yes. Where was it? Because you, you remarked that I didn't mention it. Yeah. Which one, what was that in? Oh, I can't remember. Oh, I can't remember either. Oh. Listeners... Anyway, yeah. yes, and we can see indeed the passengers descending from the aircraft using the, the sort of wheeled up staircase type thing. Final panel of page six, Batman and Black Canary in disguise are walking up the staircase into the aeroplane. Disguised Batman is saying, Now, you can't use your sonic whammy powers inside the plane, Dinah. We'll be flying pressurised most of the way. I dig, Batman. Besides, I can't often control the direction of my strange mutant power, so my judo and reflexes will have to do the job. Am I right in thinking Canary's powers kind of come and go at this point anyway. Yeah, they are quite erratic, yeah. I've got a vague memory. It's so long since I've read Hard Travelling Heroes. We've got a vague mm. memory of something in the air. She didn't have them at all, but that could be completely wrong. Mm. Could be completely wrong. I'm not sure. We arrive then at the top of page seven as Flight Engineer Todd and Stewardess Dinah enter the aeroplane further. Flight Engineer Todd is saying, The Skyjacker's got the pilot's compartment locked off from the rest of the ship. We'll stay in secret contact via wristwatch radio. Good luck. We'll both need some of that. Here goes. And as dawn begins to tint the blackened sky, a hushed group watches helplessly. Yes, the airplane takes off. Lovely colouring in this panel, actually. Oh, yes. It's gorgeous. Mm. There might be room for it in the socials, you never know. Commissioner Gordon watches the aircraft take off, saying, There they go. You've got to win this one, Batman. You've just got to. Inside the steeply climbing jets. Yeah, we see Devlin pontificating. He shouts to Willie, saying, Hey, crash! Go in first class. He turns to Dinah and says, Hey, stewardess, aren't you going to ask me if we want coffee, tea or milk? Why, yes, sir. What would you like? And then Willie says, Two coffees, doll, and the galley's that way. He points with his gun. Dinah looks a little bit alarmed. But she knows what she's doing. She replies, uh, Of course. I just wanted to see if the pilot and crew wanted anything. You stay out of there. I don't want no messages passed between you and them. Understand? Yes, sir. She thinks, that was a goof. Now he's suspicious. And as the disguised black canary reaches the plane's galley... Couple of cups, steaming hot coffee. Dinah's thinking, this coffee may be the answer. A couple of harmless but quick acting sleeping pills, and now two criminals could have their trip cut short. We see her dropping pill into the first cup. Tremendous. Caption for the first panel, page eight. While in the command cabin... Disguised Batman is saying to Captain Stanton... How many hours to San Pedro, Captain? Captain replies, At our speed at 600 knots, Batman, about five hours. Most of it over water. Hmm. It'll be tricky trying anything over the sea. We'll have to wait till we reach the jump area. Then our hidden ace, Black Canary, will have to make her play. I'm counting in them, fearing a fragile female. Alliteration there from Mr. Haney. Outstanding. The layout of this page is amazing. We have the mm. first two panels there of Captain Stanton and what looks like Tony Stark having their conversation. And then there's a weird sort of oddly shaped... Tetris shaped. Yeah, that's, that's a good way of putting it. With like, mm. you know, darkened sort of clouds and stuff with the airplane sort of dissecting the, the whole page. From inside we hear Black Canary saying, Two coffees, gentlemen. And we see Devlin, the next panel, taking a sip from his saying, Hmm, good. That's better than that bilge they serve in prison. Canary thinks. Devlin's gulping it right down. Perfect. Now, Willie Boy's about to do the same. It's all going to be easy. Now, we see Canary looking back over her head as Willie takes a sip from his coffee and a delightful caption reads, There's many a slip between the cup and lip, or so goes an old saying. Will it fit into this new twist in crime? This bizarre skyjacking to end all skyjackings? Wing directly to part two, because part one ends right here. 
outstanding, groovy. We arrive at the top of page nine. Caption tells us it's part two, and we learn that part two is called Black Black Canaries Canaries Don't Don't Fly. Dead dogs don't wag tails. That's what that (laughs) makes me think of. The caption for panel one, page nine. As Black Canary watches, with heart pounding, Willie Crash Skyjacker Extraordinary puts drugged coffee to his lips, and... Then he throws it away, spills it. Can you look shocked as Willie says, I never drink coffee, doll. Keeps me awake at night. Horrendous in panel two. I'm glad I'm glad Christine or Kelly or Alison aren't doing this episode with yep. us. <clears throat> Willie slaps Canary in the face with a whack, knocking off the uniform hat and making her fall backwards, saying, And this is for trying to pull a fast one, baby! (gasps) Oh! exclaims Canary in the foreground. We see Devlin asleep already. Panel 3 is an exterior shot of the airplane as we hear Willie's voice from inside saying, My pal Monk went into lullaby land too fast, and I remember he used to have trouble falling asleep. Now watch yourself, or I'll put a slug into that cute, busy brain of yours. Caption for the next panel. Moments later, as the stunned girl retreats to the ladies' powder room. Yep, Dinah's speaking to her little wrist radio, saying, Batman, I tried, but failed. Devlin's asleep, but Willie Crash is a tough, clever guy. It's okay, Canary. Play it cool until jump time. That'll be our best chance. They still don't know who you really are, and that's in our favour. And those little two shots of them speaking to each other are sort of inserted over another shot of the aeroplane hurtling through the sky. This is, the artwork in this is gorgeous. Magnificent. It's going to be very, very difficult to pick out ten panels for Instagram. <laughs> Let's see how I get on. The caption that rounds out page nine reads, Now as a waiting world wonders, the stolen jet streaks over sea and jungle. We arrive at the top of page ten. Hours pass, and then... We're with Batman and Captain Stanton in the cockpit of the aeroplane, and Willie Crash's voice comes over the intercom, saying, Crash to Captain, we're almost over San Pedro. I'm sending the stewardess forward to be locked in with you. Hold course and slow her down to just above stalling speed. Captain says to Batman, Batman, he's doing that so we won't know the exact moment they jump, and thus can pinpoint their probable landing spot. So, now it's up to Black Canary. In panel three, we're back out in the main body of the aircraft. Canary's there, still in the stewardess uniform. Willie still has his gun. Devlin's still asleep in the foreground. Willie looks very angry at this point, and he's saying, Thanks to you, I'll have to take Devlin out while he's still in dreamland. Now, get forward, fast. Canary thinks, it's now or never. And in panel four, she lunges forward with an upward judo chop, striking the machine gun in Willie's hand, which goes off. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Willie exclaims, What? And then Canary strikes him again, sending him flying in panel five, thinking, That burst can't hurt now, we're below pressurised altitude. So I was worried there. He starts firing the machine gun inside the aeroplane. Then, however, the caption for the final panel of page 10. But suddenly... Canary gets whamped in the back of the head again, this time with a briefcase that all the money came in. Oh my God, head trauma. This is not a good look, Haney. First panel of page 11. Willie has stars hovering around his head as he says... Devlin, you woke up just in time. Thanks. Devlin says... My pleasure, pal. You hit a doll with three million and it's lights out. She's some battler for a stewardess. The next panel, Willie says, She's no stewardess. I smell a bat. A Batman. And with that, he starts firing his machine gun <laughs> at the door into the cockpit, saying, That'll fix him. What are you doing? Yells Devlin. We might crash. Doesn't matter. We're jumping in a few seconds. But we're taking this tricky chick as a hostage. Slip that shoot in her fast. Yeah, we see Canary unconscious on the floor of the airplane. We see another parachute conveniently hanging over a chair nearby. And then the caption for panel four of page 11 reads, And in the forward cabin... Batman is saying, Captain Stanton's hit, but he'll be okay if we get him to a hospital. How's the ship? The co-pilot replies, Those slugs wrecked some gauges, but I think I can make the nearest jet port. Good. Now, hold her steady. I'm switching back to Batman and going out there. Dynamic shot of flight engineer Todd vanishing, literally, basically, before her eyes and bats carefully putting his suit back on so as to avoid not showing his face at the same time. Very, very interesting. The co-pilot replies, They might still be aboard. You'll get blasted. Got to chance it. So long and good luck. Final panel, page 11, with a dynamic quam. quam. Batman sort of twists backwards and kicks open the door that leads through to the main part of the aeroplane. We arrive at the top of page 12. The caption for the first panel reads, Simultaneously from the rear baggage hatch. Yes, we see that some parachutes are being deployed. Two of them successfully, it seems, and one of them doesn't look as though it's open properly. That's very worrying. 
The aircraft continues to fly overhead. In panel two, we see Batman approaching a door with baggage compartment, no admittance written on it, and he's thinking, They're gone and taking Black Canary. They know now she's a plant. In panel three, we see Batman pulling on a parachute, making his own way to the door, thinking, There they go. Even at this slowed speed, they'll land miles from where I'll touch down, but I've got to follow them. The caption then for panel four. This is very exciting, listeners. I mm. hope you've got a copy and you're reading along. This is great. Now another shoot blossoms in the air below the crippled jets. The Batman plunging after his quarry and his kidnapped comrade. And that caption pretty much says what we see. We see Batman in the air. The caption for the next panel reads, While below and behind, the rushing wind revives a startled canary. Yes, Canary's having a terrible time, quite frankly, in this episode. Canary comes to her senses and thinks, What? I'm shooting down. I'm descending too fast. I could be killed. And we see that she's plummeting towards a very nasty terrain of rocks and trees, etc. And as we arrive at the top of page 13, the first caption reads, Frantically, the plummeting girl yanks on the shoot lines and... Gosh. She manages to divert herself so that the shoot gets tangled up in one of the trees so she doesn't hit the ground. Canary is thinking... Phew! My luck is running pretty good. The only sizable tree in miles and I hit it. Nearby, another parachutist has made a dangerous landing. Dangerous landing. Sounds like an episode of Thunderbirds or Captain Scarlet. And the it Mr. does, Lund, doesn't yes. It? Uh-huh, absolutely. Amazing. Yes, indeed. We're back with Mr. Devlin, who is on the ground with his briefcase of cash nearby. And there's a large, enormous rattlesnake right in front of him. He looks terrified and thinks, Rattler, and the shoot's got my legs. I can't run. We can see he's all tangled up in the chute. Catch for panel three. Suddenly. Yep, it's that machine gun again. <laughs> as we see the snake being taken out with some bullets. In the larger panel four, we see Devlin starting to disentangle himself from the chute. And he cries, Crash, you saved me again. I love you, buddy. We see Crash standing on the rocks above. Machine gun in hand, a little bit of smoke from the barrel. And Crash replies, Like I said, loyalty's a Crash family trait. Come on, we'll collect that phony stewardess and move on. We get a ten mile hike to the pass. A slow dissolve, the final panel of page thirteen. Shortly This panel's amazing. I'm having to turn it at ninety degrees almost to um, <laughs> to appreciate the artwork so that they can fit all the dialogue in. It's mm. glorious. Yes, silhouette forms we see Willie, Devlin and Canary making their way through a deep, dark, rocky canyon. Willie's saying I saw another shoot dropping. It might be the Batman. If he gives us trouble, we'll shoot his girlfriend here. You got everything figured, Willie. You're even smarter than your brother Tony. Once over the pass, and it's only a stroll to the capital of San Pedro and a life of ease. Ha ha ha! He likes laughing, this guy. He does, yeah. A caption tells you we're continuing the third page following. We pass any 15 records for only $1.97 or any 11 tapes for mm. $1.97. So let's have a little look. Pick out a few here. Now by Sammy Davis Jr., that's interesting. Blood, Sweat and Tears, Greatest Hits, New Young Harvest, Bread, Baby, I Want You, Jesus Christ Superstar, A Rock Opera, Roberta Flack, First Take, Chris Christopherson, Jesus Was a Capricorn. There you go, good to know. Partridge Family Shopping Bag, Melanie Stoneground Words, Johnny Mathis, Song Sung Blue, that's song, good. Song. Foxy Lady by Cher, I wonder the cover of that's like. Another Partridge Family, At Home with the Great Hits, It's a Beautiful Day, Live at Carnegie Hall, The Moody Blues, Days of Future Past. Fantastic. Ooh, so that's probably my 11 tapes sorted right there, listeners. What would your 11 tapes be? Write in and let us know. Peter will tell you so, how at the end of the episode. Chris Claremont stole the title of his classic X-Men story from the Moody Blues. Oh, yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows that, Bumblebobs. There we are. Yeah. Well, that's news to me. Listeners, do you like the Moody Blues? I love the Moody Blues. I saw them at the concert on Glasgow in 1997 and almost broke the armrest of my chair when they started to play I Know You're Out There Somewhere. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Coming soon, the very misinformed or ill-informed David Steele Moody Blues podcast. <laughs> we arrive at the top of page 14 then. Caption reads, And as the trio trudges toward the distant pass... Canary's feeling it. She's trying to massage herself here. She's thinking, Bad luck. My wristwatch radio got smashed in the jump. How will Batman ever find us in this wilderness? Not too far away. Yes, we see the Dark Knight detective. He's got rid of his parachute lying on the ground beside him and he's thinking, Not a sign of them. Black Canary's got to give me some kind of signal. Half an hour later... We're with Devlin and Willie. There's a small building in front of them, Devlin says. An adobe house? There's a village near here, but we better steer clear of it. This shack must be the outskirts. Take the girl on ahead. I'll check it out and catch up. Interesting that Willie's given all the orders. Oh, it's his plans, you know. Yeah. Monks, the... 
the one that was broken out. He's going along for the ride. Yeah. Caption in for panel four. A few minutes pass. Then... Yep, Canadian Devlin sort of there as Willie returns. Willie says, The hut was deserted. Keep moving only a few miles to the pass. Devlin looks back and says, Hey, buddy, let me carry the money. You've done enough. He's trailing the briefcase to the next panel, saying, Heavy, but then three million must weigh plenty. In the foreground, we see Dinah looking downwards from the rocky pass that they're making their way along. She's thinking, Once over that pass, Batman could never pick up our trail. I must do something. And then the final panel of page 14, with a eee! scream, but a better one than that, she throws herself off of the rocky outcrop. Willie reaches to try and catch her. But it's too late, the first panel of page 15, Devlin puts a hand on Willie's shoulder saying, she's gone. Nobody could have lived after a drop like that. Good riddance. She was some lousy ally of the Batman's. Come on, monk. It isn't far now. And as the two criminals move off... Yes, we see... Diana, a.k.a. the Canary, still in her stewardess's outfit, hanging from a branch just growing out the side of the, the wall. Diana's thinking, it worked. I almost took the full fall, but the old reflexes are still sharp. Shortly. Panel three. We see her getting changed into a superhero uniform at last. Canary's thinking, I'm tired of being slammed around by male chauvinist skyjackers. It's time for fighting back as Black Canary. The male chauvinist skyjackers supported menswear at the Fleece and Firkin in Bristol Interesting. in 1996. The next panel, we see Canary being crafty and clever, using her small mirror to catch the sunlight. And she's thinking, and a lady's makeup mirror is perfect for signaling to Batman. So that's what she's doing. Fantastic. Meanwhile, ahead, two figures struggle to the top. We're back with Willie and Devlin. Willie's saying, The past, Devlin. We made it. Yeah, Willie. San Pedro. Palm trees. Fancy hotels, dames, all waiting for us, buddy. Yeah? Take a long look, Devlin, because that's all you're going to see of it. This is where you get off, you rotten creep. And he's pointing the machine gun at Devlin, who whirls around and says, Huh? And in the first panel of page 16, Devlin points at the bag of money on the ground, saying, Willie, buddy, what's this? You sprung me from stir? Save me from the snake? Sure. Because I wanted you to get close to freedom, monk. See it in your eyes. And then snatch it away from you at the last minute. Just like you snatched my brother Tony's life away from him when you could worry he might take over the rackets from you. Yeah, I found out you had him hit, monk. Secretly, so nobody'd ever suspect you were behind it. But Tony didn't deserve that. He was loyal. He didn't want your spot. Loyalty's a crash family trait. I'm loyal to his memory. That's... Why I'm killing you. I, I made a mistake. Forgive me. Take the money, all of it. Just don't kill me. Please, let me live, please. No way, buddy. Take another look at what might have been and kiss it goodbye. Willie points the machine gun at Devlin, but then off camera, a voice cries, One moment, hombre. And we pull back to see a ridiculously moustached figure in a sort of purple jacket, green trousers, with a large green fancy sombrero on his back. Perched on a magnificent black stallion horse with a whip in his hand. Good grief. I hope there's room to fit this in the socials. And this guy is saying, I, Emiliano, do the killing around here. Willie whirls around, sees Emiliano and the four men on horseback accompany him and cries, Bandits! And a caption rounds out part two saying, A terribly timely interruption for Monk Devlin. And a good place to interrupt our story. But it takes off again in part three. It takes off again. You see that, listeners? That's referring to the aeroplane. <laughs> Do you see? It's good, isn't it? Mm. Top of page 17, part three. Batman, Batman laugh, laugh last. There's definitely something going on with these captions, isn't there? Yeah, it's great fun. Dead men don't wear plaid and all yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, great shot of Emiliano in the first panel of page 17. It looks like actually... A bit like Doug, who I used to work with at HMB. I don't think Doug would be offended by that, to be honest. A caption is reading. The surprise vengeance of Willie Kresh against Monk Devlin has been sidetracked by a new twist. The sudden arrival of Emiliano. A surprise vengeance of Willie Kresh against Monk Devlin supporting men's wear <laughs> at Bristol Flitz and Firkin in 1996. <laughs> anyway, Emiliano, he's holding a little radio in his hand. Interesting. And he's saying to the lads... I have followed your exploits, hombres, on my transistor radio. It was so convenient and fortunate for me when you chose this area to parachute down into. For am I not the law here in these mountains? See, si, and even the government does not come into these parts without dealing with me, Emiliano. Willie points his machine gun at him in this panel, saying, You're just a 
crummy boondock bandit, and I'm gonna... But that whip! Emiliano grabs Willie's machine gun with his whip and whips it out of his hand. Willie screams. The next panel, Emiliano points at the briefcase of dollars and says, You should thank me, senor, or my vanqueros would have made many little holes in you. Now, enough play acting. I am here for what is in the suitcase. Three million Americano dollars. Open it! And we cut in the next panel to Batman and Black Canary, obviously higher up in the rocks, looking down on all this. And Batman says, Fantastic! Krish was out to kill Devlin all along. And now, a bandit's got both of them. We got here too late. Look, they're opening the suitcase, says Canary. And in the next panel, uh-oh, Devlin has opened the briefcase and it's not full of money. He exclaims, huh? Rocks? To which Emiliano, cigarette falling out of his mouth, says, Rocks? Is this someone's poor idea of a joke? He's becoming Italian. Where is the dinero? Where is it, hombres? Okay, the first panel of page 18. Willie says, I hid it in case anything went wrong. After I finished you, Devlin, I was going back for it. You mean I carried rocks all that way? Nice shot of Emiliano looking particularly annoyed in panel two as he says, Tell me where you have hidden it, or I arrange your death. Here, now. Go ahead, you clown. Then you'll never find the money in all this real estate. In the background of this panel, we see a couple of Emiliano's sidekicks. In panel three, we get a closer shot of one of them. He looks very seedy. Nice poncho going on. Mm. Big, bright orange hat. Off camera from this shot of this guy. Emiliano can be heard saying to Willie, You're a smart gringo, but Emiliano has the answer for that. Esteban, the sack, empty it. Indeed, that's what Esteban, for this is he, the chap we just described with the poncho and the big hat. We see him emptying a sack, and in panel four, we see, very helpfully, Emiliano tells us that it's a gila monster. Very poisonous, hombre. Once they get a hold, they never let go, even if you cut their heads off. Panel five is a very stylish shot of Canadian Batman, looking almost Alec Toth-like as they look mm. down. Batman is saying, oh, Crash may be a skyjacker and a would-be killer, but... We can't let that happen. Ready for action? Ready and itching, says Canadian. We see her conspicuously picking up a rock from the ground. Final panel of page 18. Emiliano has grabbed the gila monster by the tail and he's waving it towards Willie, saying, A last chance to tell me where the dinero is hidden, senor, before he takes his deadly hold. Never! And then the caption for the first panel on page 19 reads, Suddenly, there's a thwack sound effect as a rock strikes Emiliano's hand making him drop the gila monster there's a sentence I never thought I'd say when I got up this morning <laughs> Emiliano exclaims yow in the panel two we see Canary standing up in the rocks looking down Emiliano clocks her and shouts to his men a senorita charge her muchachos caption for panel three but as the horsemen rush the blonde bombshell <laughs> they're blonde bombshell <laughs> But we see Batman has been very busy. He's rigged up a line and as he pulls on his rope, a couple of Emiliano's men go flying with a scream. Aye! And then Batman says, Set him up in the next Barcana or alley, amigo. In panel four, Canary leaps down with the rocks towards another of Emiliano's men, saying, Did you man and boys ever hear of judo? She kicks one guy in the face. His gun fires off. He goes flying. And then in the next panel, it looks so she's done another judo throw and sent one guy flying into another couple of his colleagues. Canary observes, no, you never did. In the next panel, Batman swinging on his line again, as, as it looks like Esteban might be, he's firing up at him. Batman kicks Esteban, sending him flying. Batman thinks, can't keep this up. One of these shots has to find a target sooner or later. I'm struggling to keep up as well, Batman. First panel of page 20, Batman does another exciting back kick, this time into one of Emiliano's goons, and he yells to the bad guys, Crush! Devlin! Grab those guns and take off! To which Willie says, What? Okay, Batman! Panel 2 is astonishing. May have to put that out on the social somehow. We're literally going to spoil, be spoiled for choice for this one. Yeah. Listeners, go and buy a copy of this issue of B&B. You won't regret it. Batman leaping from the rocks to join Canary as they're fired on from below from some of Emiliano's men. Batman yelling, Come on! You and I have got to get out of here. And the caption for panel three reads, Running like desert deer, they soon catch up to Willie Crash and Monk Devlin. Willie Crash and Monk Devlin doesn't sound like a folk duo at all, does it? <laughs> Probably not the sort of band that would have supported menswear. No. Panel three is a shot of Batman and Canary and, and Willie and Devlin running along. Um, I like the thick, deep shadows that they've got. I mean, mm. this, this actually, mm. the colouring of this and 
the the use of blacks and stuff. It really reminds me of that Johnny Thunder story we did yes. a couple of years ago. Yeah, the, the Toth one again. Yeah, uh-huh. it's um, it's interesting, mm. and I can't help but wonder if it was deliberate. Anyway, as they're sprinting along, uh, Batman is saying, "Keep going, you two. We're all in the same stew now. We'll be the rear guard. What about those grenades of yours, Crash?" To which Willie replies, "No good. They're only shams." Well, that's not much help, is it? Now the daring duo takes up a position on the ridge rim as... Yep, Emiliano and his pals racing on this little pass, screaming and hollering. Gosh, it's exciting. Batman observes... Here they come, and Emiliano is one mad hombre. Panel 5 is a very dynamic shot. We're kind of down on the ground next to Emiliano and Esteban and all that. As up above, you see Batman and Black Canary hurling rocks down at the bad guys. Batman yelling... Toss them! Uh, <laughs> final panel of page 20... It's Batman and Canary ducking around behind the rock as they're fired on from below. Lots of zings and pows going on. Um, very westerns, you can imagine all that. Batman is saying, We can't stay in this hornet's nest. Bug out! And the caption for the first panel on page 21 reads, But the next instant, a ricochet finds flesh and blood. Oh no, there's a zing as Canary is struck by one of the bullets. Batman, in danger of blowing her secret identity, exclaims, Dinah! My arm, says Canary. She falls down in panel two. Batman steps closer, saying, Just a minor wound. You'll be okay. What? what? There's a sudden swish sound effect, and we see it's being wrapped up in a whip. Emiliano steps into view, saying, The senorita is wounded, and you are surrounded. Now, where are those two hombres? Suddenly, kapow! Kapow! Off panel, a couple of gunshots. Batman whirls. Emiliano looks. Emiliano says, Two shots up ahead. Crash and Devlin! A scramble to a spot not far off, and... Yes, Batman and Emiliano clambering through the rocks, and you see the bodies of Willie and Devlin lying on the ground. Batman says... Dead. Both of them. Their mutual hatred and those rifles. I should never have left them alone. Emiliano gets a nice close-up to round out page 21 as he says... It is the smile of fate, senor. With those two dead and the money lost somewhere, perhaps forever, you and I have no quarrel. You and the formidable senorita are now under Emiliano's protection. A slow dissolve, the caption for the first panel, page 22. Later, it is a solemn procession that winds down out of the mountains to a lone adobe building. Yes, back to that little shack we saw earlier on. Batman's now on horseback, which is pretty cool. More Batman on horses, please. Emiliano is hailing a figure standing outside the small building, saying, Ho, oh, Manuelo, two customers for you. See, I think I have something to fit them. Oh my goodness. This is grim, listeners. Panel 2, we see that Manuelo is a bit of a wooden structure on his back. Emiliano helpfully tells us that Manuelo is the local coffin maker and undertaker. But the superstitious peons in the nearby village make him do his work out here, away from their homes. And in panel 3, in the background, we can see one of the coffins being carried along, possibly by Manuelo. He must be very strong. And in the foreground, we see that Emiliano is standing, talking to Batman, with his foot up on one of the other coffins. Emiliano is looking very reflective and he says, So the adventure ends. Too bad about the money. Emiliano could have used it. I wonder under what rock or forlorn cactus it lies. It would take an army a hundred years to find it. Panel four. A little bit of time seems to have passed. Batman and Black Canary watch Emiliano and his pals on horseback start to make the leave. Emiliano's parting shot. Speaking of armies... The police may come to search for those two dead ones. Vamanos, muchachos! And a slow dissolve. So it is another busy day at Gotham Airport as a jet ends a long unscheduled round-trip flight from San Pedro. Bats and the Canary arrived back at the, the airport. We can see Commissioner Gordon and someone else waiting for them. Commissioner, Governor, I said I'd bring them back. There they are. Sorry about the money. Batman gestures behind and the nice aerial shot to round out page 22. You see a trolley with two coffins on it being borne away by a small vehicle. Commissioner Gordon replies to Batman saying, You still did a fantastic job, both of you. It should discourage other criminals from trying the same thing. And we arrive at the top of page 23. But shortly... Yes, a young man with a bundle in his hand has burst through an open door. Batman Canary, the governor and Commissioner Gordon are standing. This young man is saying, Governor, the money! The mortician found it in the bottom of one of the coffins, stuffed in a poncho. The governor exclaims, What? The money's all spread out on a table in the next panel. Commissioner Gordon looks at it, saying, It's all here, the three million. But how? I'll tell you how. Crash hit the money when they landed. He must have stashed it in Manuelo's deserted adobe. 
In the dim light, those coffins must have looked like old boxes. The governor looks surprised and says, You mean he planned to come back for it later and... What are you laughing at? Yeah, Batman's killing himself. <laughs> I'm just remembering, Governor, the way Emiliano was standing on the coffin, moaning over the money's loss. <laughs> and the final panel shows Batman and Kennedy walking off almost arm in arm, laughing as a, a spectral image of Emiliano hovers above them. Kennedy saying, that's right. He was only inches away from $3 million. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh, Emiliano, wherever you are. Laugh. <laughs> we see the money piled on the table, and a caption tells the story was by Bob Heaney, art by Jim Aparo, and a caption runs out the whole adventure saying, All's well that ends laughing, but the brave and bold beat never ends. It goes on into bigger and better Batman team-ups every blockbusting issue. Miss it never. The, the end. end. And underneath? Yes, and underneath there's an advertisement for the shadow. <gasps> Yay. The shadow knows. Speaking of laughing, because the shadow's yes. also going, ha, 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 ha. Coming soon, watch for it. Yes, will the shadow appear in the other two podcasts? Stay tuned. Coming soon, watch for it. Well, that was great fun. I mean, I have to say, to be honest, it put me in mind a little bit of both the Striped Pants War and uh -huh. that Wildcat one that we did a few months ago. Yes. Uh -huh. We're out in the desert again. Indeed, yes. Having Very adventures so. uh -huh. in, in South America, mm -hmm. it looks like. Heaney must love all that stuff. Yeah. I really, really enjoyed that. I'm glad you did. So that's for the first time reading it, yeah. Yeah, it was excellent. Really, uh -huh. really exciting. With a, few, a couple of caveats, though. Uh -huh. Canary wasn't particularly well used. No, I mean, definitely the, not. The disguise definitely aspect not. was brilliant. Mm. But I was very uncomfortable with the amount of violence that was mm -hmm. sort of shown against her. And yeah. I would have liked her to maybe have had a couple more points to show a little bit of initiative. Maybe yeah. maybe have used her canary cry to make some of the rocks fall down or mm -hmm. something. Might have given her a little bit more agency. What do yeah. you think? Yeah, definitely. The Canadian cry wasn't used at all. And after they were out of the airplane, then there was no reason for it not to be used. Mm -hmm. So It was nice when Canary was sort of introduced and they referenced her Earth 2 origins. Yes, yes, very much so. That caption alone even uh -huh. just justifies us doing the story. Yes. Quite frankly. Yes, and we stand by that. So yes. We are. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's good though, because it, it does tie into the fact that, you know, it's, it's her mm. ongoing narrative, etc. It's not letting us forget that that's where mm. she came from. It's pretty cool. I'm, I'm glad it was there. It's it's not like every single Justice League story mentions it. So it's, it's yeah. good. It's it's a nice little bit of, do you remember? Because that's what, four or five years at least now she yeah. must have been over? Mm -hmm. Anyway. And it's good that Earth 2 was actually written out in letters as opposed to Roman numerals, which Bob Payne did before in that, uh, oh, that Spectre, Spectre Flash drinks. story. Yeah. Yes. My old pal the Spectre. <laughs> that's a good issue. Anyway. Yes. Phantom Flash, Crossing mm. Traitor. Check it out. You alluded earlier on to her secret identity being perhaps blown as she enters in front of Commissioner Gordon, Batman says, Dinah. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like, what? And then he's, she's introduced as Dinah Lance, stewardess. Mm. What? Uh-huh. And although she's not got her wig on, she's brunette, you know, but yeah. still, that's what Dinah Lance looks like. Yeah, exactly. Um, no. Maybe Batman just trusts Commissioner Gordon with his information, but then... Yeah, but surely... not with his own idea. Exactly what yeah. I was going to say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a bit odd. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm glad to say we didn't get any of our pals to help us out with this one, because they probably would have been... You know, very annoyed at this. It's weird because you said you, this is the first time you've really been reading this. I had this one as a kid. All right. And yeah. I've read it and read it and read it as right. a kid. And it was just so action-packed and dramatic. And that final panel of Emiliano, almost like a spectral figure, as you said, looking up and just laughing. And yeah. and it's like it's like the Star Trek moment, the laugh in the bridge at the end. Everyone's yes. laughing in, yes. in the final panel. It's great. So this has really stuck with me. And to be honest, I've not gone back to it in many years. Right. And I've loved every panel of this. I loved it too. I did. It's amazing. I did enjoy it. I mean, I see the caveats about Canary aside, yeah. they're, they are quite major. I, want to, I don't want mm. to de-emphasize that. The artwork was stunning. The yeah. story, you know, Aparo is at the top of his game here. Uh -huh. The way the layout, the way it all flows mm -hmm. and stuff. I mean, a lot of time you probably don't even need the dialogue to kind of yeah. tell you what's going on. That Tetris panel page is yeah. fantastic. All yeah. of the you know, the various ones with sort of inserts and stuff. Uh -huh. As I keep saying, it's going to be very difficult to pick out 10 highlights <laughs> for Instagram. I mean, beautifully coloured as well. I was about to say that as well, Jinx yeah. Fanta. Yeah, and it's just, it was an absolute pleasure to read this. It's one of the best looking comics we've done in quite a long time. I hope the colouring is kept consistent in the, the reprints of it. Because mm. you know, quite often that's something that they try and modernise and it sure. never quite looks the same. Um, and obviously you've got glossier the... pages in the, yeah. in the omnibuses. Obviously not an issue in the showcase reprints because they're black and white, but yeah. in the, the coloured omnibus. I, I'm not sure if I've got it reprinted elsewhere, actually. I need to have a look, mm. need to have a look around. Mm. Listeners, if you're reading along from a reprint, how does it look? Let us know. Yeah. 
There's one big bugbear that I've got in this story. Right. And I don't know if I've alluded to this before in the past, but uh, for many years I worked in a bank. Yes, I, I did for a couple of years as well. Yes. Yes, we might have mentioned that in the past. And I ran a business cash, so I know all about cash and, and the size of cash and the amount of space it takes up. And that yes. case <laughs> cannot possibly hold $3 million in any currency, yes. pretty much. Especially not small bills. Not small bills, no, no, definitely not. I'm looking at it just now, I would say if it was... 10 if it was 10 dollar bills oh actually dollar bills are all the same size i'm, I'm forgetting mm. pretty much so let's just say it's tens that would be two rows of that da, 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 da. i'm thinking back to when i used to fill cash line machines or atms as you call them in the states yes i i never filled one up because these, mm. that was done by someone else but i've dealt with the deposits put into them and all that sort of stuff there we go nostalgia for the 90s you listeners could, Probably if at maximum, if it was $10 bills, 100000 in it. Yeah. Maximum. Yeah. Uh, That's an yes. interesting point. That's a good point. <laughs> it, it's, it's one of my bugbears about all of this sort of uh, fiction. Whenever there's like a ransom or something, and they've got a case, and it's they always specify small bills or used yeah. bills. And it's like, you look at it and you go, no, no, definitely yeah, not. Yeah, that's fair. That's, <laughs> that's a good point, actually. The thing I wanted to comment on was I. it wasn't until we were actually reading the story that I was completely actually clear on the fact that Wee Willie there was the actual skyjacker. Oh, of course. It's just over the radio. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. There's not. There's never a point where you see him making the demand or something. It just looks like Devlin's just arrived on yeah. the, the plane and this guy's here waiting for him, but it's uh-huh. not clear that this guy is the actual yeah. skyjacker who's been making the... It almost looks like he's just another gang member or something. Yeah. You know, it's not made clear that it's just one person. Apart from the Canary sort of... Uh-huh. The, the anti-Canary violence... Mm-hmm. It's my only other sort of real bugbear on this. Yeah. It's the only, only bit where it kind of falls short. But I mean, there's just so much else to like mm. yeah. in this issue. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. the artwork is gorgeous. Characterization of all the new the guest cast is is oh, yeah. amazing, uh-huh. even though they are all kind of boarding and caricatures a little bit. And I'm fascinated by the fact that we don't see them basically sort of shooting each other off panel. Yeah. I love that uh, Willie made uh, Monk walk with the case full of rocks all that distance before he decides to kill him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did Monk get a gun, though? That's the, Did he have one all along? He must oh, have done Willie would have brought spears onto the... Yeah. The, I do love the fact that Willie had fake grenades just to make himself look hard. Yeah, no, I, I'm just looking at the, the bit where Willie confronts Devlin mm-hmm. about their past and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It almost kind of gets glossed over a little bit in the story mm-hmm. that, you know, he's he's going to kill him because of what he did to his brother and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. I'm looking at that now and sort of thinking, if Devlin had a gun, why didn't he pull it and shoot him straight away? Or I'm now sort of thinking, maybe did Devlin get a gun nope. from one of the, the, the bandits or something? I'm not too sure. Remember Batman gave them the guns at the end when they were running away? So he did. Mm-hmm. Which again is a bit anti-Batman. It's not very Of course. Let me, let me just go back to that bit. Grab those guns and take off. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Perhaps need a bit more emphasis for that to register in my head. As I say, it's the first time I've read it. Mm-hmm. It was an epic. I was uncomfortable with Canary being struck so often. I can't uh-huh. lie. A couple of my other bits aside, it was it was really good. We should also sort of say that the cover doesn't really happen either. Not quite. Not <laughs> quite. No. No. Canary doesn't parachute down in, in uniform. Yeah. And the Skyjacker doesn't know we're on his trail. Uh-huh. He kind of does a little bit. Yeah. There, isn't, there isn't a scene where they land and the Skyjacker's waiting for them. Mm-hmm. So there's a, a bit of a defender's cover there. Yeah, but that's fine. It's, it's, I don't it's, mind. It's, it's such a striking cover. Yeah, it's it's a, great. It's a beaut. So I'm not really uh, going to yeah. criticise that at all at all. Bob Haney packs so much in, though. So much in. He pure does. This is where I first found out about a Gila monster. Really? As an actual creature. Because as oh, I said, right. I read it as a kid. Of course. So, yeah, and I was like, what is this? What is this thing? A poisonous thing? What is that a real thing? I had no idea at the time. Was, Listeners, okay, cool. when did you first learn about Gila monsters? Mm. Write in and let us know. And of course, it's got a really dramatic start with that plane landing dangerously and, you know, skirting across the runway. Yeah, it's amazing it managed to take off again, quite frankly, if you yeah. look at it in the splash panel. <laughs> well, oh, funnily enough, a similar thing happened to me. When you were in the bank. No. <laughs> An airplane crashed outside. No, what? Yes, and it had just enough space in it to fit $3 million. $3 million, yeah. yes. It was being piloted by a Gila monster. <laughs> Years ago, when I was on holiday in Barcelona, I was coming home from holiday, and the plane was coming back into Glasgow, and it was flying low over the runway, low over the runway, low over the runway. I thought, either we've had a very, very smooth landing, or we haven't landed yet. Mm. And all of a sudden, there was a thunk as we hit the tarmac. And suddenly the engines went on full blast, forwards, not in reverse, and we banked up and took off again. The pilot came over the comm saying, landing aborted, and we took off and banked sharply to the right. And I was going, yes, 
<laughs> I would have been pooing my pants. Listeners, takeoffs and landings are my favorite things of flying. Everything else is just like boring. But takeoffs oh and goodness. landings, I love. Uh, so I was like, this is amazing. Uh, <laughs> basically, what had happened is they'd overshot the runway slightly because they hadn't landed fully and there wasn't enough space to do that. So rather than right. land and try and stop short, they just took off and then we circled back around and landed about 20 minutes later. Oh my goodness. It was epic i loved it my wife christine sorry christine i uh, didn't love it quite so much <laughs> we're people who are never hugely in a hurry to get off the plane right after okay. after we land because people just like bustle out and it's just a mess you just sit and wait for a couple of minutes and it's nice and clear yeah i'm kind of the same to be honest that's that's yeah. what, when when i went to france with ari and his band a few months ago mm. we did the same thing basically yeah. just let everyone else go off we're not good ultimately you're not gonna yeah. get out any quicker so we were one of the one of the last passengers out and as we went out, the stewardesses, as as usual, were, you know, at the exits. And uh, I said, that was amazing. I was ready to go again. <laughs> and the look in the stewardess's face, she was ashen. And she said, we weren't. Oh, wow. Yeah. So that was a bit more serious than I originally thought it was. Gosh. <laughs> Listeners. <laughs> have you ever had a possible near death experience whilst <laughs> coming into land at Glasgow Airport? Have you ever come into to land at Glasgow Airport? I can think of a couple of listeners who have certainly write in and let us know. That was very exciting. It was very exciting. I loved every second. So of it. basically, uh, he ne- yeah, maybe something else was going on. No, I think I think it was, it was maybe like a trainee pilot with a more experienced pilot, and he was going for a, an early you know a landing because obviously maybe they have dad to, was taking him out for lessons. Could be. Could be, you never know. Anyway, Gosh. maybe someone won a competition to land a plane. Yes, listeners, have you ever won a competition to, to land a plane? <laughs> Write and let us know. And speaking of writing in, we're going to do the contemporary correspondence Yes, for issue 107. Yes, let's skip ahead to issue 109. Issue 109 stars the demon Etrigan, and we won't be doing it, sadly, but there you go. Such mm. is life. The last couple of times we did B&B letters pages, they were quite patchy in a way, yeah. weren't they? Mm-hmm. There's sort of, you know, you get highlights rather than yeah. full... But anyway, so the first letter says the three million dollar sky is what is known in the annals of comic fandom as a very fine story. Thank you very much for 15 minutes of euphoria over a masterpiece of the comic art. And that's from Keith Griffin, not to be confused with (laughs) Keith Giffen from Mobile, Alabama. Yeah, someone else, Mark Dooley from Columbus, I'm guessing Indianapolis or Indiana. I'm not sure. Indiana must be, I suppose. He says, once again, I'm compelled to give you an A plus. And then there's another little bit of longer communication from a familiar name which reads another winner for b&b i was glad to see black canary back in action especially in a situation like this wherein she is the most likely person for batman to call on aparo is one of the best artists around and i hope the awards people will wake up to that fact soon and that's from bob rosakis the answer man himself from elmont new york Cool. And one final little fragment reads, you took one of today's headlines and turned it into a top-notch story. And that's from Jerry Stephen. Good gosh. Bonterre. Bonterre, M.O. Steve Higgins texted me last week to chin me because I'd got one Montana. wrong. Montana. I can't even remember what it was now. I'm seeing Emma was Montana. Yeah, because that's what was happening all the time in the 70s, wasn't it? Airplanes were getting hijacked left, right and centre. That's it, yeah. It was very over the head. I mean, that was, um, that's something else we would probably talk about. It was just like... Mm-hmm. Some of the dialogue at the start when they're oh. making references to, you know, the high cost of living and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It was that movie that came out a few years later. It was very much a buzz <laughs> phrase. Mm. Wasn't Leela and Doctor Who sort of named after a female aircraft hijacker? Really? She was. I'm okay. sure she was Leela or something or other. Well, of course, at this point, right at the start of March, Frontier in Space is the Doctor Who story that's being broadcast. Because mm-hmm. um, as of this point, listeners, both of your hosts are now alive. Yes, we've, we've both, both been, been born. born. Yay. So from now on, every comic following here, we're both around to maybe have experienced it. <laughs> IRL. Awesome. I think that's it, isn't it? For B&B 107? Yeah. Black Canary will return mm-hmm. in the future, before not too long in the podcast. Bob Haney and Jim Aparo will return as well. Indeed. As will Batman. Indeed. But what did you think about this story? We obviously loved it. You can email us at theearth2podcast at gmail.com and let us know. You can send us a voicemail at speakpipe.com forward slash theearth2podcast and tell us what you think. Also, make sure you follow us on social media because we're putting up lots of lovely bonus material for this and indeed every episode on Facebook and Instagram. We're at theearth2podcast and on Twitter because that's what we're still calling it. We're at podcast underscore earth2. Yes, we're trying to sort out Blue Sky Max. Don't shout at us. We're trying to sort that out. That'll happen before too long, I'm sure. Yes, um, mm-hmm. listeners, I always say at this point, if you're feeling generous, you could go to wherever it is you receive your podcasts and leave us a review. We seem to have gathered an awful lot of new listeners this year. So um, if you're enjoying what we're doing, we really appreciate you sticking around and 
We'd love to hear from you what you're thinking. Give us some feedback. As I always say at this point too, if you're feeling generous, you can find the link tree and go to our coffee page and buy Peter the Price for Beverage. That'd be lovely. I've really enjoyed this one. Yeah. I wonder what's next. We'll have to tune in next week and see. Indeed. On that bombshell. On that blonde bombshell. I've been Peter. I see what you did there. And I've been David. Take care, listeners. We'll see you soon on... The Earth, the Earth 2, 2 Podcast. Podcast. Transmatter Cube activated. Return coordinate set for Earth Prime. Commissioner Gordon's answer comes within the hour. A familiar figure enters the room. Commissioner Gordon's... Commissioner Gordon? <laughs> what? Let's just do this entire caption again. Okay. Short. <clears throat> Sorry. Shortly. Sorry. Short. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm having to take a drink. <laughs> you should thank me, senor, or my vaqueros would have made... <laughs> <laughs> you should thank <laughs> other, <laughs> other racial stereotypes are available. Manuelo is the local coffee maker and undertaker. Coffee maker? <laughs> <laughs> that ruins the drama, doesn't it, listeners? Welcome to Manuelo. <laughs> Welcome to Manuelo. I, I fix you a drink, I bury you. It is, what is not to lie? Caramel latte extra shots, yes? <laughs>